What is the integral of sine to the fourth x dx between 0 and pi? Well, we know that we have to first reduce this power since it's very difficult to integrate such a high powered trigonometric function. We can basically take the square root of this and square that instead. By that I mean sine squared of x quantity squared dx, which is the same exact thing. And by using a double angle identity, we can reduce this even further so that we can actually integrate this function because we still can't do it directly. And as you know, you've seen this before, it's one half times one minus cosine of two x. Just another property you gotta remember. Closing the third level of brackets, you have to make sure to square this entire thing, right? Since what's inside here is equivalent to sine squared of x. However, we can't just ignore this exponent that we had from before. We can simplify this a little bit by bringing the one half coefficient in front of the integral. However, we have to account for the squared because it's the same thing as saying three x parentheses squared, which is just three squared x squared or nine x squared. So using that logic, we have to square one half, which is obviously just one fourth. Unfortunately, we still have to multiply out this integrand here since it's being squared. I'll just do that out by itself without the integral. So this is one minus cosine of two x times itself. And doing that out, we have one times one, which is just one minus cosine two x twice, which is just minus two times cosine two x. And we have to add, since it's two negatives being multiplied by each other, cosine of two x times cosine of two x, which is just cosine squared of two x. And that is what's inside this integrand. However, you still notice that we have a squared value. So we're going to have to simplify this one more time. And using the same logic as before, but instead of sine squared, it's cosine squared. This is the equivalent to, let me just write this out here real quick, plus one half times one plus cosine of two times whatever was inside here which was 2x already, so it'd be 2 times 2x, which is 4x. So it's kind of like a double, double angle identity. And this is actually what's going to be inside. We can still do a little bit of simplification. This becomes 1 minus 2 cosine 2x plus 1 half plus 1 half cosine 4x. And you can see that the 1 plus 1 half turns into 3 halves minus two cosine two x plus one half cosine four x. And let's put that back into the integral function. And as you can see, every term here is able to be integrated. So let's finally do that. Keeping the 1 fourth out as a constant, we have the integral of 3 halves, which is just 3x over 2, minus the 2 that's in the front over the coefficient of what's inside the trig function, since that's what you have to do when you integrate one, times sine of 2x, plus using the same logic, 1 half times one fourth sine of four x between the boundaries of zero and pi. Evaluating further, that's one fourth times three halves x minus sine two x plus one eighth sine four x between zero and pi. Now we can finally plug in the boundaries. For the upper pi, we plug in 3 halves times pi minus sine of 2 pi plus 1 eighth of sine of 4 pi 
subtract that by 3 halves times 0 minus sine of 0 plus 1 eighth sine of 0. If you're a calc pro, you can tell that sine of 0 will be 0 no matter what. And additionally, any time there is a pi term within the sine, it's automatically 0 as well. So all of these values cancel out. That leaves us with 1 fourth times 3 halves times pi, which gives us our final answer of 3 eighths pi. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below, and good luck.